Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, Kyle Busch adds to his win total, and the debate continues as to where he stands and where that lands him in history. IndyCar opened their season under sunny skies and a very energetic atmosphere, and short tracks keep throwing green flags as March is here. We've got all this and more. Welcome to Speedway Report, Monday, March the 11th, 2019. From the shores of Lake Norman and Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina, I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. I hope you remember to set your clocks back over the weekend as we spring forward. What the time change, I'm looking out the window here in the studio. This is the first time this show has began with a little bit of daylight out there since I think September or October. It's a glorious time of year, especially if you're a race fan and a fan of the outdoors. Well, let's talk about the outdoors because there was a whole lot going on as we kicked off March and it sent a lot of race teams to warm weather areas to, well, Bang some fenders and rub some wheels. Let's start out in the desert in Phoenix, Arizona. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup and Xfinity Series were on the Desert Mile in Phoenix. And Kyle Busch got out the broom, swept both events. Xfinity winner Saturday, Cup winner on Sunday. And after a long layoff, a real long offseason as IndyCar has every year, they made their uh, big return in St. Petersburg. A race was won by Team Penske with Joseph Newgarden behind the wheel. He was the champion of the series two years ago. World of Outlaw Sprints were way out west in Tulare, California. Uh, Friday night's race was rained out. That was canceled. Will not be made up. But Saturday night, Ian Madsen did a nice job and won the A main. Down in Florida... What, you think because February is over, we don't race in Florida anymore? Heck no. The ARCA cars went back to Florida at the Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, home of the Snowball Derby. Well, they ran 200 laps on Saturday night. They did it really fast, too, with only two caution flags. Michael Self was your winner as Venturini cars swept all top five spots uh, Saturday night in Pensacola. The USAC Midgets, well, they weren't in such a warm area. They were in Decoin, Illinois. But the plus side is they raced indoors for the Shamrock Classic at the Southern Illinois Center. Uh, neat story here. Cannon McIntosh, good name to win the Shamrock Classic. Cannon McIntosh won the feature race, but he had a fire during practice, had a fuel fire, had a leak, caught on fire. Big billow uh, inside the cockpit with him. Cause the fire suit he wore protected him finally, but it was scorched pretty good. He had to go borrow a fire suit to run the race, run the qualifying events and the feature race. Borrowed a fire suit, winds up in victory lane in a suit that's not even his. Nice job, Cannon. Good Irish lad with the last name of McIntosh. The Cars Tour uh, opened up their season here in North Carolina. Weather was kind of iffy, but, uh, you know, around Lake Norman, it drizzled and rained pretty much all day on Saturday. But uh, Kenley, North Carolina, about three hours to our east of the Charlotte area at the Southern National Motorsports Park. Uh, Brandon Pierce used a bump and run to get around Josh Berry on the final lap of the late model stock car 150 lapper. Pierce goes to victory lane. It was a doubleheader Saturday night for the super late models, Bub Pollard. Held off a nice charge by Preston Peltier to win the 150 there. Each race winner, uh, Brandon Pearson, Bubba Pollard, a nice $10,000 check to each. So paying out some good money on the Cars Tour. Now disappointing was the Southern Modified Racing Series scheduled to uh, race in Asheboro, North Carolina at the Caraway Speedway on Sunday afternoon. They pulled the plug on this event uh, forecast-wise on, I believe, Friday, which it was forecast for cloudy skies. And uh, on Sunday, the clouds made way for some sun, and it was an actual very nice Sunday afternoon here in the Charlotte area. It would have been a great day to go modified racing up in Ashboro. Too bad they pulled the plug on that so soon. Anyway, that will be made up this coming Sunday, St. Patty's Day, March the 17th which makes a nice double header. I'm going to see who does this as the NASCAR Wayland Modified Tour will open in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on Saturday. And the Southern Modified Racing Series goes Sunday afternoon uh, in uh, Asheboro. 
Uh, not too many guys do the double header there. I would like to see a whole lot. Hey, I grew up in the days of Evans and Cook and track chasing and uh, trying to put the pull the wool over the other guy's eyes as they race all up and down the East Coast. We just don't do that a whole lot anymore. I don't even want the want the uh, you know the secret squirrel stuff. I just want guys to race. I would love to see guys uh, double it up and go Saturday in Myrtle Beach and come up uh, Sunday afternoon in Ashboro. We'll see who if anybody does it. Uh, you know, I'm rooting. I'm old. I'm an old schooler. I need that to happen. Let's talk about what happened over this weekend. Uh, out in Phoenix, I, I actually think the, the topic of this discussion is finally going in a sensible direction. Kyle Busch has gone up, uh, won the, the doubleheader, won the Xfinity and the Cup race this weekend. It, victory lane totals 199 races spread across the top three series in uh, in NASCAR, their top three national series, Cup, Xfinity, and the Trucks. So it gets them total close to this magic 200 number, which uh, Richard Petty has in NASCAR's premier series, the Winston Cup Grand National Race. Now, Monster Energy Sprint Cup, call it what you want. But realistically, the proper comparison would be Bush's 52 wins in Cup to Petty's 200 in Cup. That's apples to apples. Now, I think the common sense has finally clicked in, and we're saying everybody's, I think, with help from Kyle Busch, that his total is not the same as Petty's. Petty's 200 in Cup is the same as his 52 in Cup. Fair comparison there. Now, taking nothing away from Kyle Busch's incredible feat of 200 wins across all three series, Mad respect for the guy. Big hat tips for him. However, as I've said for years, as so many people have, not everybody, but so many, is don't. Don't compare the 200 to Petty's 200. Bush's 52 in Cup can go head-to-head -head with Petty's 200. Fair comparison all day long. Bush even said he's trying to separate the two. And a fair goal for him would be 100 wins. He wants to get ahead of Jeff Gordon. He wants to chase down David Pearson. That's cool for, for a goal for yourself. Uh, at 33 years old, Bush is going to be around for a while. He's got what? I don't know how many, you know, he's going to go 10 more years or maybe more, maybe a little less. I don't know. We'll see how his career goes. But could he get to David Pearson, second place of 105? Quite possibly he could. Jeff Gordon has 93, very realistic. But as everybody's career ebbs and flows, we said, that, well, you know, Jeff Gordon in the 90s, if he can keep up this pace, and that two-letter word, if, is a huge word as Jeff Gordon, as his career went on, could not keep up that pace. He was competitive and won a lot of racing, but nothing like he did. You know, we all have those peaks in our careers. Jeff Gordon did in his. Kyle Busch, I think we're watching Magic right now. I want to give him all the credit in the world for winning all those races as they love a good racer. But even the common sense with the uh, fake news media has uh, calmed down on this petty record nonsense. You're not. 52 wins to 200 wins. Let's talk about that. Bush is 200 wins. You want to celebrate that. That's still fine. Just don't compare those 200 wins to Petty's 200. And everybody seems to be on board with this. And I've been saying this for a few years as the people have stirred the pot saying, oh, he's going to catch Petty. No, he is not. Stop, stop, stop. It's not the case. But big mad respect for Kyle Busch, the kind of racer he is, and, uh, well, the kind of driver he is. He's When he's gone and not doing this anymore, all of us will be, will be able to put, pump our chests out, lift our head up high, and say, hey, I saw Kyle Busch race. I would like to say that with a lot of guys that that I never did see race. I never saw you know Tim Flock race. I never saw Joe Weatherly race. Uh, so many guys just before my time. I never saw Buck Baker race. I never saw Junior Johnson behind the wheel of a race car competitively, except for you know older exhibition stuff when I was a little kid. But I would have loved to have seen these guys race. I, I'd be so old now. You know, uh, I'm happy I, I saw what I saw what I did. Uh, I grew up in the in the heyday of Petty, Pearson, Yarbrough, the Allisons, some young kid named Daryl Waltrip. I was happy to be alive during that time. I was happy to watch that. I've seen Tony Stewart come in and out of the sport. I watched Jeff Gordon come in and out of the sport. I'm happy now to see Kyle Busch 
and the talent he has. Whether you like him or not is inconsequential. The talent in the show that he brings to your TV each week is not arguable. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing Bush just keep racing. And, and part of, about this guy that I really do like, and I, there's things about him I don't like, but a part about him is his short track late model program, the KBM stuff. Um, as we look into April and Richmond, Virginia is a Saturday night in April where Richmond is running and Nashville, Tennessee will be holding their all American 400 that weekend on Sunday afternoon. And he'll be there with his late model, uh, on Sunday at Nashville. Maybe he'll start, start shotgun on the field. I'm not sure how qualifying is going to set up for that weekend, but he's going to go, he'll probably run the Xfinity race at Richmond. Well, maybe he not, he's limited on the number of ones he can do, but he'll be in the cup race on Saturday night and he's not going to be uh, with his feet up on Sunday afternoon. He will be in Nashville, Tennessee. I love the way he supports short track racing. Big part of it that makes him a racer. Uh, love it in my book. Uh, attitude sometimes. A lot of room for improvement there. Uh, at the same time, I want a guy that's got anger and passion and doesn't doesn't like second place, won't settle for that. So there's a big mix of, uh, of uh, love and criticism for Kyle Busch. I've seen him what he's done for some legends of the sport uh, as well, but it's behind closed doors. Uh, some of the generosity and caring that he has shown some people that does not get any headlines. So uh, that really opened up my eyes to who Kyle Busch is. Not just the angry guy that gets out of a race car after he loses a race. But coming up on 200 career wins across all three series and his 52, if you want to compare it to Petty's, you got my blessing to do it all day. Real racer Kyle Busch. I want to jump from the fenders and a real racer to another real racer in open wheel. Right now, is there a more inspirational story than Robert Wickens? I think not. Right now, I put him in the same league as Alex Zanardi during his recovery and what Robert Wickens is going through after that vicious crash at Pocono last summer. He was down at St. Petersburg attending the race in a wheelchair. I posted a video on social media that, that he and his fiance put up of Wickens being able to lift himself by his arms out of that, uh, out of his wheelchair and at least stand a little bit. He is a paraplegic right now, but he's working hard at a road to recovery. I'm paraphrasing here. I might get the quote wrong. So I'll say I'm paraphrasing, but Wickens said that he wants to be, uh, the best paraplegic recovery in the history of recoveries, the way he is working and exercising and driving hard uh, every day with therapy uh, to try to, he's got a spinal cord injury. It's possible he can race again. It's possible that he can walk again. Wasn't severed, it was injured. There's different degrees of what you can recover from this. I don't track this stuff, but Robert Wickens, I imagine, is working as hard with the racer mentality as anybody has ever worked to try to come out of a paralysis situation. Uh, sometimes these things happen to good people for a reason because the good Lord knows they can shoulder it. It can set an example for the rest of the world. So maybe Wickens has this so he can show the world and be an inspiration to others who have this. I would love to see him come back and race. Heck, let's start with just walking first, but the strength and endurance he has shown, his spirit, his character, Robert Wickens, damn, man, is I'm a big Wickens fan right now. So good for him, and I, I'd love to see him back in a race car someday. Now, the IndyCar season opener on the streets of St. Petersburg was not, I don't know, not every race can be NASCAR or Darlington of 2003. So for actual drama of it, not a whole lot, uh, not surprising. Uh, what we had there with the you know Pensy car winning, uh, I guess the you know the biggest drama at the end was uh, New Garden trying to get around a lapped Marco Andretti and Scott Dixon closing in on second. Wickens eventually, or Wickens, yeah, right. Excuse me. New Garden eventually got around to Andretti and uh, led the way with the. Uh, you know, Dixon in second, but there was just a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of positive feeling for the IndyCar world. I talked about this a few weeks ago, this effort that NBC sports across the board is putting into IndyCar, kind of like ESPN did in NASCAR back in the eighties. It takes uh, a whole lot to build something up, but not much to destroy it. 
IndyCar was destroyed a few decades ago and has taken that long to rebuild, even though they broke down really, really quick. Uh, but there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm. The crowd was really big at St. Pete. The energy was there. They had celebrities on hand. NBC Sports did a nice job uh, covering it. I, I was excited. I was really excited for this, and I'm excited for this season. Uh, so New Garden wins. Uh, Mooresville resident, buddy of mine, Will Schneider, works uh, Team Penske. He's a mechanic on there. So hats off to you, Will. Uh, his girlfriend, Casey, celebrated her 30th birthday down at St. Pete. So they had a cool uh, celebration in Victory Lane. Will, by the way, is an amputee himself. He'd love to come back as an uh, amputee tire changer and also be an uh, example to others, much in the same sense of Wiccans. Now, I'm going to continue the Wiccans theme here as I look at uh, as uh, Felix Rosenquist with a nice fourth-place finish in the Ganassi cars. He reminds me of Wiccans one year ago. Wiccans come in, uh, should have, could have, might have won the race one year ago at St. Petersburg. He did not after that tangle with, um, uh, gosh, who was it? Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, he got, he got spun out and, uh, and uh, uh, did not go on to win the race. But he made a big splash, big rookie debut, and it was uh, – it was fantastic, and then he was was a big leader all year long. I didn't know much about him before he started IndyCar racing last year. Rosenquist is the same thing, and I've heard some about him, not a lot, but here he comes in. He's in real top flight equipment with Ganassi's car, and boom, he's up with a fourth place, qualified in the top five, finished in the top five in his first race. That really bodes well for a strong season for a guy I really don't know, much like Wickens. Well, Wickens became a little bit of a star last year, and I'm wondering if Rosenquist is going to have the same kind of on-track energy as Wickens did and lit up the IndyCar circuit. He's in good equipment with Ganassi stuff, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that's pretty cool. And, gosh, I want to see what this kid can do. Uh, he's not a kid. He's 27, but he's he's got a whole lot of experience, and some of the more knowledgeable folks closer to Indianapolis have called his name for years and years and said, someone's got to scoop this guy up fast. Well, Chip Ganassi has, and qualified third, finished fourth in his first race. Chip always did have an eye for talent, which, by the way, I hope he's watching this podcast, and maybe some of those boys want to jump on board. Maybe we go you know, to the network. Just saying. But just an idea for me. Uh, earlier today, we'll stick with the open cockpit, open wheel theme. Formula One officials, and I'm not a fan of gimmicks, but forgive me if I kind of like this part right here. Let me tell you this. Formula One officials announced today that drivers who set the fastest lap during every event will receive a bonus point toward the Formula One championship. There's a bonus point for the race for the guy that sets the fastest lap. Uh, the F1 bosses and the FAA have been in discussions about introducing new initiatives and awarding a point for the fastest lap that won, and it received a lot of backing from a lot of folks across the board. The new rule will be enforced beginning this weekend as they open up the season down under in Australia, but there is a condition. You know, there's always a condition with this stuff. To get the bonus point, only drivers who finish in the top 10 are eligible for the extra points. So you have to finish in the top 10. You got to finish in the points to get the bonus point. Uh, drivers who fail to finish or finish outside of the top 10 cannot earn the bonus point. If a driver who fails to finish or finishes outside the top 10 sets the fastest lap of the race, the bonus point will not be awarded for that particular event. However, think do the math on this one a little bit here. We've got 21 races on the Formula One schedule. There's a potential for an additional 21 points to be awarded throughout the year. That could decide a championship right there. Not just the point system that they have, but with uh, the fast lap, that 21-point bonus that could be going out as they'll award that race to race to race. A little bit of short track news. The Grandview Speedway will open up their season with the Bruce Rogers Memorial. And the Forest Rogers Memorial is always run in mid-summer. Uh, they're going to open it up with uh, remembering Bruce Rogers as he took the reins after his father passed. It's going to pay $7,500 to win for the Pennsylvania Small Blocks uh, on the season opener. 
Better yet, will be $1,000 to start for a Saturday night opening night race at the Grandview Speedway in Pennsylvania. Good money there. Be about a $50,000 purse for the night that Grandview Speedway is putting out to the local racers. And I am off. We are out of Charlotte this weekend, and I am going to be heading to the beach. Going to Myrtle Beach as the NASCAR Whalen Modified Tour is in town. They are coming south. They're going to the beach. They're going to race uh, 150 laps on the half mile this Saturday, late Saturday afternoon and on into the evening. I'm going to go down there. I know a lot of our audience and friends and family watch this show with uh, Modified Roots. Look me up. I'll be the guy in the Speedwear Report shirt <laughs> walking around the pit area at Myrtle Beach. I uh, already been in touch with our friend, Short Track Mike Neff. Uh, good to go down there. I look forward to seeing the Modified Tour and some of the modified friends as we come down to Myrtle Beach Speedway. See you guys on Saturday. As we pay tribute to Motor Week Illustrated, where the roots of this show started all those years ago, our Racer of the Week. Well, we talked about guys, a few guys tonight, uh, that define the word racer. And I had a little, this is one of the tougher ones of the year, but I'm going to make a call on this one is who lit up my world the most. And it was a tough one. It was between Kyle Busch and Robert Wickens. My racer of the week is going to go to Robert Wickens. He's so inspiring, uh, showing the world that even through tragedy, you can rise a little bit like a phoenix, and uh, showing, showing the world and, and people that when you get knocked down, you can get back up. And something about Kyle Busch, I'm really impressed with his accomplishments. However, I think he'll have plenty of chances through the rest of 2019 to earn the Speedway Report Racer of the Week uh, much many more times throughout the year. Wickens, he showed up at St. Pete, was an inspiration to the entire paddock, the entire grandstand. It was great to see him, and hopefully a lot of eyes and film were on him, and he can show others what can be done, even if you do get knocked down. Well, in between our broadcasts, you can keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. This show and all of our past shows are uploaded on the site. We also have racing articles to read. You can catch our archived episodes on Facebook and the Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds page and at Racers Reunion. On Twitter, I'm at Speedway Report and at Speedway Pat and at RacersReunion.com in the forum all of our archived shows. Have a look at us on Google Plus, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Big thanks to everyone who chimed in on the Facebook live feed this evening. And I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, Take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are the quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You've been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pad. Also... Catch up with me on Instagram, too. I'm at Speedway underscore Pat. Uh, we will be back here on Facebook in one week. Oh, but first, coming up next, uh, on the Drag Racing List page, go to Facebook, the Drag Racing List page. Racing and Rocking is coming up in about six minutes at the top of the hour. John, Barb, and Bill will have cool music and some drag racing chit-chat. We'll be back here in a week, Monday, March the 18th. We will look at NASCAR Cup from Fontana, California. Uh, NASCAR Whaler Modified Tour opener at Myrtle Beach. Formula One's season kickoff in Australia. The 12 Hours of Sebring is next week, too. And I'm sure we got a whole lot of short track racing. I think the Rattler is being held next week in Alabama, too. But thank you all for joining us. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>